is fighting to keep his campaign alive during solo press conference. Um, I told you guys that it wasn't going to be as bad as you think it was going to be. And the media was going to play the role of covering it as like, uh, you know, he had some moments, but he ultimately pushed through. Look at what a big boy he is. And that is the overwhelming consensus. Obviously in the normie sphere, everyone's talking about vice president Trump. Everyone's talking about president Putin and all that kind of stuff. But, um, but in the media sphere, in the, in the sphere of those with actual proximity to power, uh, the way that this uh, press conference was, uh, was, was reviewed was, you know, he showed that this is his favorite subject and he's uh, good at talking about NATO. Look at him. He's so good at foreign policy. And I'm obviously going to dissect some of the foreign policy takes that he has, both from the perspective of like, what does this do for his reelection? Is this actually impressive? And, uh, and overall, like, do I agree with any of the things that he said about NATO? Obviously, the last part about it is that uh, the last part is, of course, that I am not in support of any of America's, um, you know, foreign policy positions. Uh, pretty much across the board, they're pretty bad. But um, let's continue. Working to save his reelection campaign, the president took questions last night at his first solo news conference in eight months. He showed command of foreign policy over nearly an hour, but also stumbled at times. The big question now, well, I should have just let George say it because he just literally said it. He said exactly what I said. He showed command over foreign policy, but he had some stumbles. Elected Democrats fall in line or ease him out of the race. Chief White House correspondent Mary Bruce starts us off. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, George. Well, the White House this morning. Oh, shit. The majority report. What's up, everybody? Uh, thank you for the raid. The majority report. Hope you had a good stream. Uh, welcome. He is touting a strong performance from the president, but it is not clear if what we saw from him last night is going to be enough to turn the page. He did admit that there are other Democrats who could beat Donald Trump, but said it would be hard to start from scratch. And the president was adamant unless his team can show him that he is headed for certain defeat. He's staying in this race. Overnight, despite a rising wave of opposition, President Biden making clear his mind is made up, convinced that he remains the best candidate to defeat Donald Trump. I think I'm the most qualified person to run for president. I beat him once and I will beat him again. During an hour long press conference, Biden taking questions from nine reporters, hoping to demonstrate he has the mental fitness and stamina to stay in this race and lead for four more years. I'm not in this for my legacy. I'm in this to complete the job I started. But out of the gate, Biden mixing up his own vice president and his rival. Look, I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. Trump seizing on that moment, writing, great job, Joe. But Biden firing huh. back, yes. He said, great job, Joe. Oh, you're doing great. It's so funny. Because, like, in a, in a way, in a way, Trump can't be beating on him too hard for two reasons. One, because he wants him to stay in the race because he knows that's a beatable candidate. Okay. Unlike the rest of the Democratic lineup. And he also can't be beating on him too hard because then he's going to look like he's, you know, he's just like doing elder abuse and no one wants to see that. But of course, the fact that he's pulling his punches also causes other election watchers to see him as like uh, a person that's moderating his positions. So in a way it's a win, win, win for Donald Trump to just like kick back, let the media cycle eat Biden alive. And um, you know, they just do their, they just do the damn thing with the RNC. That's going to, that's really going to swap uh, the attention. I think unless Biden actually says some fuck shit, in between now and the RNC, like the media will, of course, shift their attention, shift their focus over to like how insane the Republicans are, even though I suspect that this RNC cycle is going to is going to have uh, the Republicans trying desperately not to come across as like super radical. So we'll see. I know the difference. One's a prosecutor and the other's a felon. 
Hours earlier, a similar mistake. Biden introducing Ukrainian President Zelensky as Russia's Vladimir Putin. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. We're going to beat President Putin. President, President Putin. We're going to beat President Putin. Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin. Pressed on that error, the president laughing it off. You mixed up uh, President uh, Zelensky and Putin. Good catch, sir. You really killed it. Putin earlier today. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dismissing the moment and calling the NATO summit a success. But even as he pushed back against concerns about his age, the 81-year-old admitting. I just got to just pace myself a little more. Pace myself. In the next debate, I'm not going to be traveling into 15 time zones a week before. <laughs> but the president was defiant, dismissing the growing chorus of Democrats calling for him to exit the race. I served in the Senate a long time. The idea that senators and congressmen <clears throat> running for office <clears throat> worry about the ticket is not unusual. Have you talked about the Eminem album yet? No, because I don't care. Uh, uh, like, I'm not that kind of millennial, okay? <laughs> like, that's crazy. I guess he, like, took shots at uh, Candace Owens and stuff, but, like, I just don't know. You're just triggered? Yeah, I'm I'm triggered. He, what did he say? Did he say mean things? So there's a long way to go in this campaign. And so I uh, I'm just going to keep moving. Keep moving, and because, look, I got more work to do. We got more work to finish. And while he said he has full confidence in his vice president, Kamala Harris's ability to be president. From the very beginning, I made no bones about that. She is qualified to be president. That's why I picked her. He made clear he would only reconsider his decision to stay in the race if polls show he has no path to victory. No, unless they came back and said, there's no way you can win. Uh-oh. They're giving him the solid edit again. They're... Chat, <laughs> this is a dangerous prospect, okay? They're giving him... They're giving him the, the dignity edit, okay? For the past two weeks, three weeks, they were not doing that. They were just showing it raw. Now, now they're giving him the dignity edit where, you know, they're just like ch 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 chopping it up to make it sound like he's got... <laughs> making it sound like he is very coherent. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the coherence edit is uh, here. This is, we, we covered it yesterday, but uh, the New York Times didn't give him the coherence edit and immediately fucking wrote, without paraphrasing, exactly what he had said verbatim. President Biden said polling in the presidential race is premature because the campaign really hasn't even started. I mean, hadn't started in earnest yet most of the time at... Start till after September, after Labor Day, Labor Day. Where is the ellipses? The issue is not his current performance as much as what his performance will look like in a month, a year, in three years. Why doesn't he get this? Because he is a resentful, spiteful, old piece of shit. Okay? And I'm done hiding the truth. Not only is it actually dementia, but he is reflective of the broader boomer side movement and by that i don't mean like you know genocide on the boomers i mean the genocide that the boomers want to do to the rest of the world okay that's it that's literally it brother that's it he is a spiteful resentful old man and many of us know those people in our immediate lives people that are just holding on due to modern medicine going too far, extending the lifeline of all of these fucking assholes who have captured 75% of the wealth, okay? He's just a regular old, crusty-ass boomer who's just like, why won't you give me what's due? I deserve it. Mmm, I deserve it. That's it. That's it. He's just like, I've been in politics for 50 years. I'm the president. Look at how great my agenda has been so far. I deserve it. It's my time. It's my time. No, motherfucker. It's midsummer time. Okay? It's midsummer time. I'm done. I'm done with this shit.
I'm done with entitled ass boomers. I don't do a lot of generational politics because I think it's like ultimately it lends itself so perfectly to reactionary sentiment. But God damn, dude. God fucking damn. What is going on in the world, brother? Everyone over the age of 65 is just going crazy mode. They need to dial it back and go. They need to be put out the pasture. Okay. Go live in a fucking retirement home. You know, fuck each other silly. Get all of the fucking gonorrhea on the planet. If you want to do all of that, that's fine. But stop fucking the bag up. Okay. We need to do a forcible extraction of all of the wealth that is captured at the tippy top right now. And I don't mean by like, I don't know, the, the new geriatric focused economy that we are going into i'm talking like just take their money take their fucking money it's done take their power away take the keys to the car no more boomer shit have you covered project 2025 or the jeff docs or just covered biden being old please and trump is better have you covered project 2025 brother you just started paying attention you've been following since 2019 but like i think you are telling on yourself I'm a political commentator. I've been talking about Project 2025, not only for months, but also beyond that. Like I've described to you what Project 2025 is and how it has been in existence for quite some time. Oh, there's a, there's a chaotic donor situation happening as well. You uploaded a vid on your channel literally two hours ago on it. Yeah, that too. To be fair, you have a lot of returning people. I know. It's not necessarily that like I'm annoyed with the returning people who are just like now invested in politics again. I'm annoyed with the people that come in here with this attitude when they're like, Ugh, seems like you're not covering any of the stuff that would actually uh, reflect poorly on Donald Trump because of some secret reason. It's like, dude, that's you, man. That's your problem. Haven't watched since 2022 to be real law. Exactly. So why are you coming in here with this energy where you act like I'm fucking secretly in the pocket for Trump or some shit? You cover Project 2025 or the Jeff Docs or just covered Biden being old? It's like, what do you mean? Biden or Buster? Nah. As of five minutes ago, the latest house them to call on Biden the dropout did it to his face. Lamal, respect. Sorry if this is a bit unrelated, but could you briefly explain how you why you dislike NATO? Not right now. Yeah. Levin, apparently... Mike Levin told Biden directly to his face that he should drop out. Translation, Joe, my internal polls look very bad. Please drop out. Yeah, that is what that means. And that's not a bad thing. That's a smart thing. Yes, Biden is unironically harming the entire Democratic Party's uh, down ballot races. It's really fucking bad. Amira Lynx, thank you for the 25 gifted subs. <laughs> oh, no. Yo, John's popping. He said, thank you for holding me accountable. It is racist and sexist to believe Vice President Harris will be a stronger candidate than President Biden. I'm listening and I'm learning. Oh, no. There is white on white crime happening right now. Okay. This is, ooh, goddamn. You don't like NATO? What are you, Trump? Oh, dude. So much worse. This is the funniest thing. Yeah. Um, excuse me. How dare you say Biden should step aside to let Kamala Harris be the president? Uh, or to let Kamala Harris be the presidential candidate, okay? Excuse me, why are you saying that? <laughs> Biden is a black man. <laughs> Biden is a gay black woman, actually. <laughs> and you guys are doing a no growth. You guys are doing a, a, uh, a microaggression against a gay black woman like President Joseph Robinette Biden, Okay. So this is the latest news. Former President Barack Obama has recently expressed to his allies that President Biden's chances of winning have significantly decreased, suggesting that Biden needs to seriously evaluate the viability of his candidacy, according to multiple sources familiar with his views. Obama has only spoken with Biden once since the debate, and he has made it clear in his discussions with others that the decision about Biden's candidacy is ultimately Biden's to make. He has stressed that his primary concern is safeguarding Biden and his legacy, and has rejected the notion that he alone can influence Biden's decision. Behind the scenes, Obama has been actively involved in discussions about the future of Biden's campaign, receiving calls from concerned Democrats, 
including former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, and has shared his perspectives on the challenges facing the President, according to individuals with knowledge of these con conversations who requested anonymity to discuss private matters. Also, notice the thing that the first tweeter has in common with them. Yeah, lawyer, legal commentator, fighter for democracy, prosecutor Trump University at, uh, at New York AG, commentator of MSNBC. All these folks calling Biden to quit, they're all white guys because Biden is black. They're all also collectively saying Kamala would be a better candidate than Biden. It's so funny because, like, absolutely zero people give a shit about, like, what the broader black community or the black voter base has to say because polling has been conducted on the black voter base time and time again and their opinions also reflect the opinions of these white people in positions of power but zero people are talking about that okay like zero people are talking about that which is so funny it's just a conversation exclusively that white people are having is this quote tweet a joke? Yes, the quote tweet is a joke. John Lovett and the Pod Johns are experiencing what I have experienced for almost my entire career, being treated like pariahs, Bernie bros. They're being treated like Bernie bros. Yeah, also, the other part of this equation is that I, I don't like lean in too much with the... Um, uh, with the, the, the black vote is shifting uh, narratives, but like the black vote has to a certain degree shifted in unprecedented levels over the course of the past decade. Not in a significant way, mind you, of course, of course. But like the idea, the, the, uh, the notion that like, oh, black people want Joe Biden. That's why you're racist is so fucking stupid. Still kills me that John Lovett was the first ever fear and guest. Oh yeah, that's right. New inside the meeting with Biden and the, um, uh, and the Hispanic caucus. Biden showed up an hour late to the zoom frontliners M MGP and Gabe Vas Vasquez tried to ask questions, but were denied. Levin told Biden to step aside call ended right after Biden responded to Levin. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Shit is not doing all right. Why is the BBC so bloodthirsty? <laughs> let me say this as clearly and as simply as i can inaudible that's not real by the way that's not real i don't think they actually posted that they say i'm still running the if the it's an edit john lovett was my mufo and like the tweet i made about frank sinatra being ronan's dad i didn't even know they were married at the time <laughs> were they ma i didn't even know that they were married to this day i thought they were just dating and i know both of them Umfi is A A V E. Yeah, M Hut doesn't do M Hut doesn't do A A V E out of respect. They were engaged. Sorry, <clears throat> I know they're not together anymore. Yeah, John fucked up the bag big time. Um, there was a guy watching your stream during the NATO conference. <laughs> no, that's not real. <laughs> that's so funny. You guys are so stupid. Oh, dude. I, look, I do have a lot of people in the media that that um, that watch me. Oh my God! Oh, okay, that's a ten ten top of the hour debate. I'm hanging it up. The Gaficus, thank you for the ten tier one gifted subs. Oh my fucking God! That's a top of the hour debate, and you cooked me. You destroyed me. You broke me. I am no longer the same person that I was before I clicked on this link. Comrade Hoppa, thank you for the 10 gift this subs, allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. That was a phenomenal bait. Here's the three minute ad break now. I don't, that was, that was fucked up. Um, umpteenth time. Thank you for the 20 gift this subs. That is, um, other chatters should look to what this chatter did to me and you know, get better baits overall because that shit was fucked up disastrous biden call with the hispanic caucus yeah we just covered that but apparently it gets worse according to the source biden responded to levin's comment the host tried to end the meeting but biden said he had time for one more question despite the president trying to take another question the host represented linda t sanchez ended the meeting anyway that got a 998 out of 10 602 rate uh raiders it's a good rating Someone always fucks it up.
nine nine eight. It deserved a ten, but I don't think we've ever actually gotten a ten out of ten. Someone always fucks it up. There's always like a couple haters. Um, so Guardian is coming out with the knives too. Hakeem Jeffries linked up and built uh with uh Brandon today as well. Hakeem Jeffries reportedly did not offer Biden his endorsement in the private meeting, which is pretty wild. Um for anyone on the Hill, this letter is explicit permission, perhaps even tacit support for coming out, uh, coming out against the president. It seems neutral. It isn't. Yeah, he's um, so Jeffries is basically, uh, as I've said before, Jeffries is Nancy Pelosi's guy, right? Nancy Pelosi basically groomed him for this position. So he is going to do exactly what Nancy Pelosi said. And that's precisely what he's doing. Dear colleague. Hakeem Jeffries' letter. Over the past several days, House Democrats have engaged in a thoughtful and extensive discussion about the future of our country during a time when freedom, democracy, and the economic well-being of everyday Americans are on the line. Our discourse has been candid, clear-eyed, and comprehensive. On behalf of the House Democratic Caucus, I requested and was graciously granted a private meeting with President Joe Biden. That meeting occurred yesterday evening. In my conversation with President Biden, I directly expressed the full breadth of insight, heartfelt perspectives, and conclusions about the path forward that the caucus has shared in our recent time together. As House Democrats have done throughout this Congress, we will continue to work in the best interest of everyday Americans. Thank you for your continued leadership in the service of the communities we are privileged to represent. Sincerely. So, this right here, and Izzy is literally uh, a, used to be a press person, I think might still be, but used to be a press person for Ilhan Omar. I think still is the press person for Ilhan Omar. Like, he's, this is what he does. He writes these letters, okay? This is the type of shit his job is literally to write that, okay, for a congressperson. So he's absolutely correct on this. For anyone on the Hill, this letter is explicit permission, perhaps even has the support for coming out against the president. It seems natural. And uh, it seems neutral. It isn't. And he's right. He is basically doing what uh, political reporting came uh, out about yesterday. Uh, that Nancy Pelosi was doing. Nancy Pelosi apparently told House Democrats, like, urged them to, one, speak out against Biden, and two, uh, if they have to, you know, if they have to call out Biden and call him to resign, then, uh, and, and it's going to help their elections, they should do so. That is the exact opposite of what you do as the House Speaker. Okay, Nancy Pelosi's entire job her in, throughout her entire career has been to make sure that that never happens. So the fact that she is allowing leaks to happen, okay, and in those conversations, basically saying, no, you can come out against Biden, uh, giving explicit permission, okay, to come out against Biden at a time when Hakeem Jeffries and Nancy Pelosi are supposed to be Biden's greatest allies, that are supposed to stop this flow of discontent means that they want him out. And the reason why they want him out, the reason why they want him out is because they see the dire prospect of the down ballot races with Biden at the top of the ticket. And, uh, and beyond that, they see the dire prospect of Biden's reelection. I think ultimately it would be at this point, considering that Biden has like, uh, kept it going for this long. I would say that at this point, it would be silly to drop out before the RNC, especially when a lot of the RNC communications is going to be around the top of the ticket being Biden. Some of them have actually recalculated and some of the Republicans have actually started retriangulating their messages uh, against Kamala Harris. No, not DNC, RNC. RNC is happening next Monday. The RNC is starting in the next three days. Donald Trump is going to reveal who his vice president is in the next three days. I already ran the three minute average chatter. Stop. I got destroyed. Remember? Anyway, ultimately, yeah, I, it's going to be JD Vance, but that's different. Uh, right now, even if they had convinced Biden to drop out, I doubt, I doubt even if they had convinced Biden to drop out yesterday, 
uh, or today or tomorrow. I doubt that they would come out before the RNC. They want the media to pay attention to, they want the media to pay attention to the, you know, madness cycle of the Republican Party. Okay? So it would be uh, significantly better. It would be uh, uh, genuinely smart to, you know, wait until after the RNC is done to come out with the Biden dropout revelation. That is if they have actually convinced the old man to listen to reason. Having said that, in that time frame, however, where is it? You got donors saying they're going to freeze roughly $90 million as long as Biden stays in the race. Biden won't quit unless Obama comes out against them running publicly. Yeah, potent that, that is uh, really chaotic, though. I don't understand why waiting would be better. better. Wouldn't it cause people to focus on the bad shit stuff that the RNC is doing? No. Biden dropping out is a major week, a uh, week-long media cycle affair, maybe even a month-long media cycle affair. He drops out, then people uh, shift their focus to who the new person is. No, that would dominate the news cycle in the same way that like Biden's current bad brain is dominating the news cycle. This is very fortuitous for Donald Trump because every moment that the media apparatus is not covering Donald Trump's insanity and uh, ridiculous reactionary sentiment and uh, and how chaotic he is, how disordered the Republican Party is, and how they are responsible for abortion is a good moment for the Republicans and their electoral prospects. So the Democrats, in terms of the upcoming election, really desperately need the media to shift their focus onto the RNC. And Biden's flubs currently are kind of making that hard. So right now, uh, I would go so far as to say that the Monday meeting with Lester Holt is a bad move. I think that Biden's, I think that Biden's team is bad. Okay. I'll just say it like that. I think Biden's campaign is not good. We already knew that they were not good when they decided to fucking trot him out in front of 50 million people uh, in an early ass debate that is now going to possibly cause him to uh, leave the election altogether. Right. That's a that's a big fucking deal. That's a massive flub. I am trying to find it, but there was a political scientist saying that Biden dropping out right after the RNC would be unlike anything we have a history of because it sucks the air out of their message and let Dems remake it however they want if Dems were smart. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I, I, I am in agreement with this. Uh, I think that tactically, it would be an incredible move. It would be an incredible move to just wait out until after the RNC, if the Democrats were united, if they were smart, which they are not, and they are cowardly, they are feckless, they are, they are legitimately scared, some for good reason, because obviously making bold proclamations about the top of the ticket, uh, demanding that the top of the ticket drop out is going to uh, create a, a, an air of panic, you know? But having said that, having said that, it would be... It would be pretty fucking, it'd be a pretty solid move. Biden's soul is willing, but the flesh is spongy and bruised. <laughs> True. Who is favored to win the 2024 election? 538 uses polling, economic, and demographic data to explore likely election outcomes. Biden wins 50 times out of 100 in our simulations over the 2024 presidential election. Trump wins 49 times out of 100. There is less than one in 100 chance of no electoral college winner. What do you mean? Why are they smoking? The data is perfectly accurate, I swear. Why are you guys... Why are you guys doing the same thing that the Democrats are doing when you, when you see something that doesn't reflect what you immediately thought the race looks like? Guys, I have, I have maintained the position that there is still a likelihood that Biden wins this election, okay? All things considered. The problem is not whether or not Biden can win the election. The problem is how fucking unlikely it is at a time when he, it should not be a toss up at all. Do you not understand the problem here? The fact that there is still a likelihood that Biden can win the election is the reason why he's holding on for dear life, which is really fucked up. At the highest echelons of the Democratic Party, there is a significant push for President Joe Biden to reconsider his decision to run for re-election in 2024. <clears throat> 
Former President Barack Obama has expressed his concerns to allies while Speaker Nancy Pelosi has privately advised Biden that the party risks losing control of the House if he does not step back from the race. Pelosi also shared polling data with Biden, suggesting that he may struggle to defeat Republican Donald Trump. However, Pelosi strongly rebutted these claims, stating that reports based on anonymous sources misrepresent any conversation she may have had with the president. With time racing towards the party convention next month, Democratic unease is growing at the White House and within the campaign at a fraught moment for the president and his party. This story draws on information from over half a dozen sources who requested anonymity to discuss sensitive internal discussions. The Washington Post initially reported on Obama's involvement. Obama has communicated to his allies that Biden should assess the viability of his campaign while also emphasizing that the ultimate decision rests with Biden. In recent days, the former president has been in contact contact with congressional leaders, Democratic governors, and key donors to address their concerns about his former vice president. If you found this video interesting, then make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. And thanks for watching.